documentary. Um, Could you? Is that open? Yeah, you have to put it. No. Okay. Yeah. No. Well, I'm very excited. It's the first time I see the film in such a big screen, which is amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, and you two guys, how do you feel about it? Watching your your own story, your own life, on a big screen like this, Abdul. Remind me of, of uh, my life, remind me of my hometown. Um, it's just very interesting and touching. But I'm excited to see, I'm very happy to see all those people that I attend to voice of all. Thank you, Gret. Yeah. And, and Louis, you, you don't speak English very well, so <laughs> I'll ask Eric to translate uh, the question. Um, what did you think when you saw your own story on the big screen? What did you think when you saw your own story? Well, I guess uh, I was very excited. Yeah. I thank the audience for coming to watch the film. I really yeah. appreciate it. I I wish everyone to have health and yeah. everyone to be happy and everything. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Larifa, how did you come up with the idea for this documentary? Um, it started from a TV program, an Israeli TV program from uh, the um, main government channel who wanted me to do a piece about uh, gay Palestinians and I was starting re uh, a research and from the very beginning I met Louis and uh, I heard this story and it was immediate that I understood that it's not a piece for a 10 minutes um, you know um, yeah. in a magazine before it should be a, a, a whole film that will uh, join Louis in his uh, journey an unknown journey back then and um, because I knew that if I would film him, I would need to cover his face as long as he's in Israel. And this was to my protect promise, him. to protect him, my promise to do it. And um, so I took a risk doing the film because uh, if he would, wouldn't get an asylum, and an asylum process is not an easy thing, then uh, I wouldn't have a film. Was it difficult to convince Louis to, to participate in your film? Maybe Louis should answer this. I uh, think it's hard to convince you to participate in the film. I think it's hard to convince you to participate in the film. No, no, no. Why do you want to convince you to participate in the film? Okay, because people who are in the film start to understand their children. הם עבר על, על הבן שלו, על הרבה דברים, או עבר דבר, דבר משהו על הבן שלו, שכאילו ההורים שישבו עם הילדים שלהם, כאילו, ישאלו אותם מה הם רוצים, מה הם רוצים. So people, when they, when they will watch this film, they will think about their own children, families, parents, fathers will think about their sons. Um, I will add and say now that it's, it's a big, huge question mark what this film will do to the uh, Arab society, Palestinian society in Israel, in the Middle East. We don't know. This is really the first time that this film is being presented, so it's um, unclear to all of us. It was difficult for you to persuade him to participate. I mean, did you put a lot of effort in it or was he very... I met him in a point after uh, 10 years in Israel where it was really an ongoing process of dead end. Yeah. He was in and out of jail, he was uh, constantly being uh, deported back to Palestine and he uh, uh, ran away back and people, it was very hard, his life in Israel was uh, very hard and although he had people who were helping him, um, it was very difficult. And the guy from the LGBT, um, which you, you see in the film, he persuaded Louis to, to give it a chance. Maybe the film will do something to change your way of life. And I told him that he decided to participate in the film. Excuse me, I wanted to say something. I wanted to say something. 
ותודה לשגריר שבא לראות את הסרט, גם זה כבוד גדול בשבילי. זה big honor for me that the ambassador of Israel came to see this film. תודה רבה. How many boys like Abdu and Louis are in Tel Aviv living like, a life like this? Um, from what I know and from the research, of course there's a lot of gay Palestinians, uh, gay Arabs that are part of Israel and gay Palestinians which are part of the occupied territories in Gaza and the West Bank. It starts to be a problem the minute you're being exposed. You can tell exactly the way it is. The minute you're being exposed and the West Bank is an isolated area, rumors are going fast, immediately people know, families are tribes, as we say, uh, uh, big families, everyone knows about everyone, you need to, or if you've been traveling to Tel Aviv, because Tel Aviv is the, uh, uh, the, gay, capital. Say the capital, gay capital of the uh, Middle East, so you've started moving between Tel Aviv and the West Bank, someone told that you cooperate and etc etc and starts this thing so we know about let's say um, less than 100 men which uh, their lives are in different stages some of them are still hiding some disappeared some we don't know we follow these cases for the last we I say the lawyers that are dealing with this thing uh, for the last 10 years and um, a lot of stories a lot of people that and not a lot of people that come and say, like Louis did, I'm gay. This is, I don't need to go in Tel Aviv with a card saying I'm gay. Why do I need to? And Louis had to do so in order to protect his life if a policeman would be considerate. Yeah. And there was a funny thing in your film, and maybe Abdul, you can explain it to me. Why do Palestinians think that when you're gay, you're also with the Mossad? Well, that's a big issue actually because I mean people there are Muslims very close to each other. Well everything different, they don't accept anything different. But when something seems different, especially like as a gay or homosexual or even like you become rich like that, so directly they will think that you were a spy with the Musad or working with Israel. So it was a really big issue with the police the police when they get arrested and start picking me up and them since to investigate me and they say, you're a spy working with uh, Musa and I say, well that's bullshit because I'm wanted to al Shadak. I used to be <laughs> world administration uh, guy in Ramallah, I've been in trouble with the uh, Israeli army every time I get arrested, they shoot me once. I mean, I mean, how could I work with them? I don't want to work with them, I'm just gay. You can, you can judge me as a gay, but I'm more. But if they're going to send me to the Palestinian court, you don't throw the law, the Palestinian law, the rules. There's nothing against homosexuality, or they didn't mention anything. So they need something, they, they want to, for, to force me to, to find something else to judge me. You understand, in a way. Okay, we can prove that he's gay, we don't have anything, uh, uh, really the law against him, but we can call him a spy, or, or a, a Mossad worker, so we can judge him. And, really hit him and, and, and hurt him. So that's the, the, the point. 